GIK Acoustics presents Bass Traps and Understanding Low Frequencies. Does your room's frequency response look like this? So how do you get a flatter frequency response like this? Before we can identify where your problems are and how to fix them, we need to understand how sound moves and how it interacts in your room. People tend to think of sound traveling in a straight line. At high frequencies, this is relatively true. However, as you go lower on the frequency spectrum, sound acts less like a ray and starts radiating more like a three-dimensional sphere. So in lower frequencies, sound not only comes at you, but also wraps around items in the room and bounces, or reflects off floors, ceilings, sidewalls, and front walls before coming back at you. All of those reflections arrive from different places at different times with different intensities and at different phases. In addition to this odd radiation pattern, bass waves are also much longer and much stronger than higher frequency waves, and there's very little in a typical room that is dense and large enough to have much impact on these longer, stronger waves. By comparison, there are a lot of things in your room that can have an impact on mid and high frequencies. Things such as carpet, equipment, furniture, curtains, people, and even air can either absorb or scatter high frequency waves, making rooms considerably more damped in mid and high frequencies. People and heavy furniture can have some impact on low frequencies. However, starting with broadband bass control is usually the first thing recommended in order to bring your room in line. When addressing a room's acoustics, we need to not only address the frequency response, but also the decay time curve. Why is decay time so important? If a room was perfectly flat in frequency response, yet 10 times too long in the bass decay time, you would still not be able to properly hear balance, harmonic textures, imaging cues, and so on. In addition, when bass bounces around the room for too long, it tends to interfere with the direct sound you're hearing from your monitors. When this interference occurs, it can either happen constructively or destructively. Constructive interference causes large peaks in response. Destructive interference causes large nulls or dips in response. These types of peaks and nulls based on reflected waves can occur for a variety of reasons. They can be modal, which refers to problems based purely on a room's dimensions. They can be non-modal, which can be based on where you're sitting. Or lastly, they can be related to how a speaker is placed in relation to its boundaries and the seating position, which can cause phase-related response problems. In addition to all of this, bass tends to build up wherever it hits a boundary. An example of a boundary is a wall, floor, ceiling, and so on. So boundaries tend to be a good place to address bass, and corners are a focal location as you have three boundaries meeting. While corners are certainly a very efficient place to control bass decay, they're not the be-all, end-all solution. If we treated all of the horizontal and vertical corners in the room, decay time may be under control. However, non-modal peaks and nulls generally need to be treated at the reflection point of the problem. The moral? Look for the best overall solution which addresses both frequency and decay time related issues. GIK Acoustics offers both broadband and targeted tune trapping to solve room acoustics problems. We invite you to contact us to help you determine the best solution for your room.